So I'd like to start by sharing our, our vision for the private web. But what, what do I mean by the private web? Imagine a web where you don't have to log in separately to every different site and where you own your identity. Imagine a web that's not constantly surveilling your every action and using it against you. Imagine owning the data that you create in apps and being able to use the, the data securely in other apps. This is our, the vision of the private web that we're trying to build with Peerless. Currently, it's easy for anyone to share media, websites, or apps privately or publicly in Peergos in any browser without any extensions. Peergos is a protocol for private storage, social media, and applications built on top of IPFS. This includes user-controlled identity, sandboxed applications where no surveillance is possible, untrusted servers, and quantum resistance. Most of us are ex-physicists, so we, we care a lot about that. And protected metadata, which we'll be talking more about later. But let's start with a quick overview of the architecture. The physical architecture is, is quite flat. Every Peergos instance has an embedded IPFS instance, and these all communicate over BitSwap, uh, the DHT, and peer-to-peer -peer streams. There's also a PKI, which stores its data in, in those IPFS instances. But the critical thing for, that, we, that we rely on a lot is that this doesn't depend in any way on, on DNS or the TLS certificate authorities. Of course, if you want to access a Pegos server over DNS, you can if you want, but the protocol doesn't rely on it. The logical architecture is also quite simple. Each user has a home server, which is responsible for storing their data. They can have as many mirrors as they like and each home server can store as many users as it can handle. So with, within their home server, each user has uh, a set of key pairs, which, which are used to sign the Merkle roots of data that's in IPFS. And th these, these are called, we call these mutable pointers. They're similar to IPNS, but with slightly different properties. And the only other thing we have uh, is a mailbox. So this is a, it's a blinded encrypted mailbox. Um, for reasons which we'll discuss later, but, and it's not, that's the one thing that's not stored in IPFS, which is to do with the, the quantum resistance. Pegos breaks down into several trust boundaries. So these are mutually un, untrusting regions. So if any data or hashes cross one of these boundaries, then it's verified by the recipient, whether it's a hash or a signature. So for example, the Pegos client doesn't trust the Pegos server, the server itself doesn't trust IPFS, and apps are also sandboxed off from the client. So these sandboxes, these are actually operating system level processes. And you need to do that if, if you care about things like side channels from things like Meltdown and Spectre. This arrow on the left is an interesting one. So this is uh, the case of an S3, direct S3 block store, which we'll talk about later. But in that case, the block store itself actually verifies hashes of writes from the client. But we'll see more about those details later. During file upload, uh, a file is split into five megabyte chunks. Each of these are independently encrypted and then split into fragments, which are then stored in IPFS. And the, the, the critical benefit we get from this, well, one of the critical benefits we get from this, this chunking is it allows us to hide the size of files. So the different chunks of a file can't be linked together from the service perspective. So you end up with a maximum of five meg size for a chunk. And actually we go even further. So we, we pad the files before encryption to a multiple of 4K. Uh, so then you end up the only possible sizes of a chunk in the entire system. Uh, There's five meg divided by 4K, which is 1280. So we, we try to keep the entropy very, very low. We do access control uh, and it's serverless access control. Uh, so it's capability based. Every file or directory has several symmetric keys associated with it. And if you want to grant someone access to an entire subtree or just one file, you can do that by just sharing the key with them. And then they can decrypt the file uh, or if it's just a metadata key, they can decrypt the path and the, and the metadata, including the name. There's also a write crypt tree, which is a bit simpler. 
um, but still also based on symmetric keys. And the one property both these crypt trees have, which we care a lot about, is, is to do with quantum resistance. So for the, for the privacy of your files, we only rely on symmetric encryption and hashing. And neither of these uh, are broken by a quantum computer. They're a little, they're, you get a 2x speed up, but nothing significant. Whereas asymmetric encryption is totally broken. So that's why we, we don't rely on that anywhere in, in these crypt tree structures. The other thing we care a lot about is metadata. So there's a long list of things the server can't see, uh, file names, paths, sizes, and properties, things like the MIME type and modification time, even whether something is a file or a folder. Uh, and because of that, the server also can't see the directory topology. Can't, it can't see the number of files uh, or the number of directories or some of those. But the other kind of metadata we care about is the social side of things. So who has access to a file can't be seen by the server, nor, nor even how many people have access to a file. And uh, along similar lines, the social graph. So that's where the mailbox I mentioned earlier is blinded. So the server can't see who's sending a follow request to whom. And so your social graph is totally under your, your control. The main thing the server can see is an upper bound on the total amount of space used. And if you care about that, you can just fill it with, with empty data. <clears throat> so that's the architecture. That, now for some highlights from 2020. At the, at the beginning of 2020, we already had photo galleries, video and music streaming for arbitrarily large video, a text editor, and a PDF viewer. In 2020, we added to-do boards or Kanbans, so you can plan whatever it is you're trying to plan privately and it fast encrypted file search. So that, that sounds trivial, but in an end-to-end -end encrypted system, it's actually pretty hard to, to efficiently do file search, uh, but we were pleasantly surprised with how, how fast it turned out to be. Now, the, the following three things we haven't actually announced yet, so I'm giving you the, the inside scoop, uh, but you can already try them out on, on our beta server right now. The first of these is a calendar. So it's a private calendar. Uh, the model is every event is stored as a standard iCal file in your Pegos space. And this means we can leverage the, the sharing capabilities of Pegos. So you can share individual events with your friends or indeed generate a secret link to an event to share with anyone. Second cool thing from 2020 was peer-to-peer -peer web hosting. So this, this lets you basically host a website, it's a static website from Direct, directly from a folder in your Pegos space. You get instantaneous updates, and there's no, no cryptocurrency required uh, to, for publishing or updating. And it's basically a single click to publish. Once you've done so, uh, you can view your, your website via any public Pegos gateway. So we've set one up at pegos.me, and it would be your username.pegos.me. But a much cooler way to view it is a peer-to-peer -peer way. So if you run Pegos locally, then you can view it at username.pegos.localhost. And if you're viewing it, it that way, then it's totally independent of DNS. And you've got the secure, authenticated peer-to-peer -peer delivery of Pegos and IPFS. But wait, there's more. The next thing was a social feed. So we've been building up to this one for a while. So this is, it's a, it's a feed of, of things that have been shared with you by people that you follow in Pegos. And obviously it's end-to-end -end encrypted, so it's 100% client-side assembled. This means that there's no AI and no ads. As well as all these applications, we've, we've made some big server-side improvements as well in 2020. So the first one of these was the thing I mentioned earlier, the direct S3 block store. So in normal operation, a, a Pegos client gets all its data from, from the Pegos server that it's talking to. Uh, <clears throat> but with a, with a direct S3 block store, the client still authorizes reads and writes with the Pegos server, but it then talks directly to S3 for both reads and writes. Now reads, you can see how that might work, but writes sounds a bit tricky, especially when there's multiple users around. Uh, but the way it works is the block store's content addressed. That's the way IPFS uses it. Um, and what we do is that when the, when the Pegos server authorizes a URL, 
it includes the hash of the thing, the, the file that's being written. And S3 verifies that. So S3 will reject a, an invalid write where you try to change the data maliciously. And the, the, the obviously the cool thing about this is it reduces the bandwidth requirements of the Pegasus server by about 100x. So a very small server can suddenly host a lot more, a lot more users or a lot more, a lot more data. The next cool thing, server side, was fully concurrent garbage collection. So you, you reach a point, uh, especially with, um, with a remote block store like S3, where uh, garbage collections can take up to, up to a day. And during this time, other pin operations can't proceed. So there, there are a few features of our design that allowed us to get around this. Uh, the first one is, is a transaction API. Uh, which helps us prevent the blocks from being GC'd before they've been pinned. Uh, and actually, we don't actually need, we realize we don't even need to pin them at all anymore uh, because all, all our pins are implicit from the mutual pointers that I mentioned. Um, and so during, during writes, uh, everything's happening client side. So the server doesn't really know, you know have, doesn't have any concept of a file or anything. So you just start a transaction and then you annotate every block put with that transaction. And that allows us to not collect those blocks if there happens to be a GC before you commit. And this is it's fully concurrent, so there's, there are no, no global locks. Um, and yeah, writes, writes can proceed concurrently. But that's not all. There was plenty more in 2020. So we, we managed to increase the, the bandwidth of uploads and downloads by about 4x, uh, mainly by increasing the, the maximum block size. We've sped up navigating around your, your file system by about 10x by an improvement to Cryptree. And we made saving text files seven times faster. But by far and away, the biggest highlight for us in, in 2020 was uh, being awarded a, a Horizon 2020 Next Generation Internet Architects Grant uh, to extend our, our decentralized social media capabilities. So this is what we're going to spend most of the next year working on. So the, within those plans, we, we're going to extend the social feed to allow more general posting and commenting. Uh, we're going to implement decentralized group messaging, uh, specifically not using the MLS protocol, uh, as well as an email bridge. So there's plenty of fun stuff coming. So thank you very much. If you want to hear more, then go check out our website or sign up to a, a beta, um, or you can ask questions in the chat. Thank you very much.